how to build a sales funnel. That's right, you wanna discover how to build a sales funnel, that's why you're here, so I've got the five steps for how to build a sales funnel for you, and at the end of our time together today, at the end of this show, I've got a key to success, the one thing you don't wanna miss, You've got to stay with me all the way to the end because you're going to love this key to success. It is the absolute best thing you can possibly do to make your sales funnel extremely productive. So today we're going to share these five steps with you. The step number one is that your sales funnel is a system, but it has to be the easiest process ever for someone to work with you. So you may have heard Jordan Balfour talk about his straight line sales process. Well, his straight line sales process is essentially a sales funnel, but the fact that he's used the words straight line to describe it is exactly what your sales funnel should be. You can't make it difficult for people to work with you. So your sales funnel needs to be super easy, super accessible, and the absolute best way for people to not only get in contact with you, find out more information about you, decide whether they want to work with you, qualify themselves, and then help you not only sell one thing, but make three, four, five sales, make three or four, five different opportunities for you to provide value in exchange for financial compensation. So your system is your sales funnel and it's an easy process to take people from somebody who's just walking around on the street who's never heard of you to somebody who's your best repeat customer that's what a sales funnel is all about that's what a sales funnel should do all right step number two in how to build a sales funnel is really where you start and that's taking people who've never heard of you before but who look just like your best client and helping them identify themselves, helping them raise their hand and say, hey, I look just like your best client. You have to do that work and then convert them from suspects into prospects. Your sales funnel helps you figure out who looks just like your best client. And then once you figure out who looks just like your best client, your sales funnel needs to help you take that person and get them to raise their hand and demonstrate interest in you. Now, if you've been to my YouTube channel and you've watched any of my videos or you've been on my podcast for any length of time, the Inside BS Show here, you know, you absolutely know that I want you to only market your services to people who look just like your best client. People get all caught up in the semantics of sales, marketing. We call this a sales funnel, but really what it is, the first part is marketing because it helps you identify the best people who can possibly ever work with you. And then it helps them raise their hand and say, I want to work with you. Well, in this step, where you're taking suspects and getting them to raise their hand, what you're doing essentially is you're making an offer of something for free. Now, I call that a honeypot. It's also called a lead magnet. It's called an engagement device. It's a free report or it's a course or it could even be a free consultation if you're in professional services. And what that does when you reach out to the suspect, the person you suspect is going to be your next great client. When you reach out to them and you say, hey, I've got this free report. Do you want it? And they say yes. They immediately go from being a suspect to being a prospect. Now, you can reach out to them through email, through direct mail letters, from the stage if you're speaking. You can reach out to them in an article. At the end of the article, you can offer this free report or consultation or course. There are hundreds of ways you can reach out to suspects and get them to identify themselves and convert into prospects, but that's what this step in the process does. Step number three, the third thing you need to do is you then need to take those prospects and engage them in your honeypot, engage them in the report, engage them in the consultation, really pull them in, get them to tell you what their problems are, get them to understand that you're the expert, you wanna maximize this credibility opportunity that you have, and think about it this way, you want them to think about you as the person who can solve their problem or the person who can help them achieve a goal. You're there to deliver value in exchange for financial compensation. 
Don't think of yourself as a salesperson. Don't think of yourself as a practitioner of your profession. Think of yourself as somebody who solves problems in exchange for financial compensation. And you need to convey that in this step in the process. Now, step four, the next step is that you want to qualify the person that you're speaking with. Qualify the person who's shown that they want to work with you. Now, what does that mean? You're going to identify this opportunity. We're talking about building a sales funnel. So the most important step in your sales funnel is right here. It's qualifying the person to work with you. So what does that mean? That means that they have to have a problem you can solve. They have to have the ability to make a decision. They have to be in charge. They have to have money. If they can't pay you, you're wasting your time. Run the hell away from there. And then the fourth thing is they have to have urgency. They have to want to solve this problem right now. If they have money and they have the ability to make a decision and they have a problem you can solve, but they've had this problem for 15 years, and there's no reason for them to solve it now, you're wasting your time. You got to make sure they have all four of these elements. So let me go through them again. They got to have a problem you can solve, okay? So if you're a doctor and somebody wants to come to you for advice on buying a new car, that's not a problem you can solve. Or if you're a car dealer and somebody comes to you for advice on how to finance a house, that's not a problem you can solve. You're a financial advisor and somebody comes to you and they have a problem with which school to put their kid in, that's not a problem you can solve. So that person immediately is not qualified to work with you. They have to have a problem you can solve. The second thing, they have to have the ability to make a decision. They gotta be the boss. If they don't have financial authority, it makes no sense for you to talk to them. Now look, there are people out there who will say, ah, oh, Dave, but I meet with influencers and eventually they'll influence the decision. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather meet with the CEO or would you rather meet with his assistant? I'd rather meet with the CEO because the assistant, the, the only thing the assistant can do is get you a meeting with the CEO. So if I can't get to the CEO, sure, I'll take a meeting with the assistant, but that's my second choice. You always want to be in front of the decision maker. If you have a choice of meeting with a schmo or meeting with a decision maker, meet with the decision maker nine times out of 10. If meeting with the assistant is going to immediately prevent you from ever meeting with the CEO, then you can't take that meeting. So you need to be able to identify whether or not this person has the ability to make a decision. And then the third thing, they have to have the money. So don't beat around the bush. Ask them what their budget is. If they don't want to tell you what the budget is, say, hey, listen, we're both adults. I want to work with you. I just need to know if it makes sense. And the way that it makes sense is if you tell me what you have to spend, and then I can tell you if I have a solution that's in your price range. And if you don't want to give me an exact dollar amount, I'll give you a range. You say yes or no. Get a budget number out of them. And then finally, you got to ask them the question, why are you making this decision now? Why is this the right time to solve this problem? You've had a problem for six months. You want to solve it now. Why? If I don't solve this now, Dave, my wife is going to divorce me. That's urgency, right? If I don't solve this problem now, Dave, I'm going to get fired. That's urgency. If I don't solve this problem now, Dave, my shareholders are going to go berserk. My stock price will drop. That's urgency. That's what we're looking for. So those are the qualifying steps. And that's step number four. Step number five is nurturing. So let's say the person you're meeting with, the person you're talking to, they have money, they have the ability to make a decision, and they have a problem you can solve, but you're not sure that they're going to do it right now. They don't really seem motivated to act on this right now. Well, if they're not motivated to act on this right now, What you can do is you can continue to communicate with them. You can stay in touch with them and you can nurture them. You can bring the relationship along over time. That is the next step, nurturing them, communicating with them until they buy or until they die. That's the key to this step in the process. I prefer email. I like to do weekly emails to all the people on my list. If you're listening to this as a podcast or watching this as a video, 
You're getting this probably on a daily basis from me. I do these videos every day of the week. Every single day I'm here with a brand new video. Every single day of the week I do a brand new podcast. It's great information and maybe you're thinking about working with me at some point and eventually the timing is going to be right, but I'm continuing to communicate to you because I want to keep building the relationship that we have. Nurturing is essential. That's the last step in the process that I'm going to share with you today. Now, I promise you the key to success, and we're at that time in our show where I'm going to deliver the key to success to you. And the key to success is to make it super easy for everyone to follow this sales funnel. You got to make it easy for everybody on your team to use it. You got to even be transparent and make it easy for everyone in the sales funnel to understand where they are in the process. And how do you do that? You use your own system. Now, if you don't have a system, you don't have your own sales funnel, I'm going to let you use mine. Go to this website right now revenueroadmapguide.com, revenueroadmapguide.com. Go to that website. When you go there, you will be able to get immediately instant access to my Revenue Roadmap Guide. It's your own funnel. It's actually my funnel. It's the funnel that I use in my business. I want you to take it. I want you to use that funnel, revenueroadmapguide.com. Go there, download that sales funnel. That's how you can make it easy. That's the key to success. And if you're looking for more information about building a sales funnel, putting together a sales team, managing your sales team, maximizing B2B sales, or working through your business development challenges, on my YouTube channel, there's a video. All you got to do is click on that video. You're going to see it pop up right when you go to my YouTube channel. Or if you're watching this now on YouTube right below me, there's a video. Click on that video right now. I'll see you in our next Inside. BS show.